Well, I met Carlos and his wife, uh, Shawnee, uh, because Shawnee actually serves on our client experience team at the Unstuck Group. But Carlos is in ministry as well at a great church in Miami. And Carlos, would you just share a little bit about uh, your church and your specific leadership role? Christ Fellowship Miami is a, a multi-site church, um, very diverse. Uh, and we have six locations in Miami-Dade. And uh, we currently have six global campuses, uh, several in Colombia, uh, one in, in Guatemala and one in Costa Rica. And so these are our campuses that are autonomous. Uh, however, they do uh, have the same vision, mission, strategy. And I do. I want to come back. I want to come back to that because I think, well, maybe not in your part of the country, but that focus both on um, South Florida and the Caribbean and some of the other Central American countries is um, it's it's interesting and intriguing to me. So I want to come back to that. I cut you off, Phil. Yeah, I, I forgot to answer the second part of your question. I yeah. serve as the executive pastor. Uh, I've been on staff at Christ Fellowship for 12 years. And uh, this year, I officially became uh, the executive pastor uh, here at, at, at Christ Fellowship. Yeah, and actually, that's where I want to begin, because I'm, I'm excited. You're stepping into this executive pastor role, and I'm starting to see in other churches across the country, millennial leaders are finally getting their chance to lead in larger churches. And so how, how did your team at Christ Fellowship prepare you uh, for this expanded leadership responsibility? Yeah, so great question. I have uh, been on staff for 12 years. I actually started as a volunteer. Uh, I, did, you know, initially I had not gone to seminary. I had a, a degree in, in business. And so I went, you know, I got my bachelor's degree in business and started serving in the church. And uh, I came on staff as a worship uh, director. And so I'm a band director leading worship. I play multiple uh, instruments. And so then, you know, here at Christ Fellowship, the, the, the incredible thing is we really do have a culture of leadership development where we're always thinking of who is mm. your apprentice, who is, who's going to be your successor. Th there's that, there's that culture that we've established here at Christ Fellowship. And uh, when I started as the uh, worship leader, uh, worship director, uh, then I was, I transitioned to the campus pastor role at the campus that I was in. Uh, and then eventually I became the campus pastor at the broadcast, broadcast campus, which is in the Palmetto Bay area. Um, and I stepped into the uh, pastor of campuses where I, where I had the opportunity to oversee the campus pastors. And, and I did that for about two years. And then just now in January, I, I transitioned into the executive pastor role. So throughout my tenure here at Christ Fellowship, I've been able to uh, really experience a lot of different areas of ministry uh, with with young adults as well, small groups, uh, leading a campus, then overseeing the campuses, uh, overseeing the gl global campuses as well. And so the experience has helped me, uh, you know, step into this role. Uh, and and we we do have we've actually created a a leadership development process which we. Uh, were able to uh, unfold and, and, and roll out to the staff about a year ago called Level Up. And so all of our staff is required to go through this process. There's two benefits to this Level Up pro program. One is you, you develop all of, your, all of your team. You know, you want to take your team through, this, through, through the process. And then the second thing is that you want to intentionally develop your successor uh, to, to lead if for whatever reason God calls you somewhere else or something, you know, happens, you know, you, you can, you can groom that person and, and, and develop them to, to take on uh, the position that you're in. So we're always, we try to be as much as we can forward thinking and, and having the right person lead uh, um, the ministry that God has entrusted uh, us with. And uh, a lot of our leaders have been developed within and so very, very few times, Tony, uh, do we go to the outside. There, there, there have been times and it's been very fruitful for us where we've gone through Slingshot and other uh, organizations that uh, recruiting, recruiting firms uh, that can help you bring talent. But, but most of our hires are within. And, and, and I think there is a lot of uh, um, 
good, uh, uh, you know, fruit that we see from that. Yeah, well, that answers my next question, because I was going to ask if I could come work for you at Christ Fellowship. But if you're if you're hiring from within, I, I already know the answer to that question. Uh, <laughs> All right. So you're uh, you're in this executive pastor role and you explained a little bit of your responsibilities. And I do know that executive pastor positions look a little bit different from church to church, uh, especially in larger churches. But the question that I always hear is, what does your relationship with executive pastor look like with your senior pastor? So uh, I know Omar's relatively new into his role as senior pastor at Christ Fellowship, but what does that working relationship look like between the two of you? So I think one of, one of, the, one of the great things about Omar is that he empowers me to lead the organization. And so my job as, a, as, a, as an executive pastor you know, he gives us the vision and then my job is to execute that vision. And, and one of the things that he's done really, really well is that he really will empower me and say, Carlos, you know, you lead that meeting, you lead that, you know, uh, even, even, you know, uh, a lead pastor usually is the one casting vision and, and he does, uh, but he will also empower me to cast vision as well. Uh, but he always wants to empower me to uh, lead the organization uh, to lead the staff, one of the things as an executive pastor is one of the, as an executive pastor one of the one of our priorities is the uh, culture of the staff. You know, we want to ensure that the staff is healthy. So I think our team has really uh, done. We we try to be as intentional as we can uh, to make sure that the, the staff is healthy. And listen, uh, you can have a healthy mm -hmm. staff for one season. That things can happen and then all of That's a sudden right. it becomes it starts becoming it goes from from being healthy to being critical then to being toxic and so uh the what i would tell any executive pastor is really be as intentional as you can to create and foster a, 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 a an environment of health and 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 really to invest in your staff because if your staff is not healthy then it's really uh, going to uh, bleed into the church and, and it will affect the church and one way or the other, eventually it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect the church. So Carlos, uh, speaking of staff, I know at Christ Fellowship, you have a number of pastors and directors that are leading ministries, they're leading campuses. In fact, do you, off the top of your head, any guess to how many total pastors and ministry directors that you have all together? Well, our, 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 we have 84 staff right now. Uh, that, yeah. That's full time and, and some part time. And right. we have in, in our core team, off the top of my head, I think we have 18 in our core right. team. And so our core yeah. team is all the campus pastors, which, which is six of them. Uh, and then all of our ministry directors, which are uh, the ones who lead uh, like students, kids, small groups, worship production and, and ministries like that. Right. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to get to specifically because Amy and I actually had an opportunity recently to meet with your directional leadership team, and it's uh, it's just six. So you have eighteen in your core team, but then you have this tighter leadership team of six people that includes a mix of pastors and other directors. Um, what's what's the function of that smaller team? Can you explain what that team does that's different from the rest of the pastors and directors? The beauty of 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 the directional leadership team is, uh, well, first of all, we we meet consistently. We we formally meet every Monday. We're constantly talking, constantly collaborating, and here's the the and I think it's been uh, for me. Has has been very helpful to lead and serve this team. First of all, they're incredible, high capacity leaders. But every yeah. leader, every leader oversees a different part of the organization. So whenever we have an idea, it may seem like an amazing idea for the campuses and for the campus pastors, but it's probably going to be a terrible idea for our kids' ministry, our students' ministry. So Samantha and, you know, Ray, who is our the pastor of campuses, will bring up this idea and say, hey, I feel like we need to do this. Samantha will say, wait a minute, we haven't thought about this, this and that. And not that she's shooting down the idea, but she can bring an right. eye insight and so can Gideon 
that maybe Ray or Debbie or someone else does not see and and, and vice versa, right? I guess I, the you probably understand this, but help the help those that are watching. Why don't you allow all your pastors and directors to have a voice in direction and in that ultimate decision making about strategy and what's happening in the church? Why don't you just allow all 18 of those people to have a voice in those decisions? Yeah, that, that, that's a that's a the great question. And Tony, I would actually say it, it's not that we don't allow them to have a voice. Right. They do have a voice, but their voice is shared through their directional leadership leader. The staff culture is the healthiest it's been. And yet, uh, not all the campus pastors are sitting around that table. However, yes. they do they do feel heard. They do be they do feel heard by their leader. And their leader is able to either cast a vision as to why, why we cannot go that direction. Or, you know, there, there's been times, Tony, there's been times where we have, uh, we're, we're processing, processing a decision and we will bring it up to the entire core and say, hey, core, what do you guys think about this? It will, it, you, it will stifle the organization to have 18 people making decisions <laughs> for the entire church that that's yes. going to create a, a a a bottleneck it's going to stifle the organization and you are you're you're going to slow things down you're going to be stagnant and 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 you you won't be able to serve the church well uh by by doing that i totally sense, agree yeah. yeah i totally agree and completely makes sense um and what we've seen you mentioned the uh, best christian workplaces earlier uh, what we've seen is when churches try to keep a really flat organization where there end up being lots of people connected, let's say to the senior or executive pastor, what ends up happening, we think that that's the right thing to do because everybody gets to be involved uh, with their voice and in the decision itself on every decision. But actually what we've seen is when you when you have that many people connected over time, it almost becomes uh, an us against them deal where they're just representing their specific areas. Um, and it, it, it almost um, it, 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 uh, negatively impacts the culture, I think, rather than trying to clarify lanes, help people understand where they do have a voice, where you do want collaboration. But ultimately, for most of the decisions, the decision making is going to be a tighter team of leaders. Oh, yeah. And, and Tony, one of the things that I try to push myself and even Pastor Omar, uh, and, and I would really encourage anyone in, in, in my role is to try to step into reach, a, reach into other tables that you don't lead and just ask questions. So I just can't imagine when you're talking about uh, campuses in Miami and the Caribbean and in Latin America, how in the world do you keep everybody aligned so that you really are still one church in multiple locations? What does that look like? Uh, you, you need to have the, hire the right person, have the right systems in place, and, 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 and make sure that you are, there, there's, there's, there's clarity because when there's ambiguity, people create their own narratives and they start leading, you know, and, and mm -hmm. that, that, that can become very messy. And then the other thing is that there needs to be a, accountability. And I know that it can, it, and sometimes it can seem like a, a, a curse word, you know, a bad word, but <laughs> there needs to be accountability. Accountability. I have to ask this question. Um, what coaching would you give someone like me who has the conviction is trying to figure out how do we increase the diversity, that multi multicultural, multi-ethnic part of our team? How, what coaching can you give me? And so the first thing I would say is um, uh, have, have the, you know, um, you know, have a diverse team. You know, I think that that, mm -hmm. you know, you're naturally, our human nature instinctively, we're naturally going to gravitate towards the people who look like us, who speak the same way that we speak, who uh, have a, come from the same background, that, but it's having people who are different, um, uh, having them on staff and making sure that they have a voice where it, you, you, their voice is heard and not only heard, but also that they, you operate on the feedback or the ideas that are presented 
uh, from people who think differently and, uh, and you know, come from a different background. Uh, thankfully, here at Christ Fellowship, if you look at our leadership team, we all have a, 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 a di- we all you know are very we're very diverse not only not only in our uh, eth- ethnicity but also in age as well and so because and everyone- and gender too uh, both gender. men and women too men yeah. and women yep 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 absolutely absolutely and so that is important and, and not only in our in our directional leadership team also in in our core uh, team as well. And so you, you, if you want to have a diverse congregation and you, or you want to have a diverse uh, staff is bring on those, you know, bring in someone who is, has a different ethnicity to your team and part of your leadership team where they, uh, they can influence and shape the direction and um, the, the, the leadership of, of your church.